right, guys, what do we have going on here? Well, I did something a little bit different this time. Before, I've brought you, in previous videos, the iGUS Rebel robot and the AR4 robot. Those are two open source robots, uh, at least I had the open source variants of the iGUS, that I used JavaScript to control. They were both six axis robotic arms, and they were both low cost robots. So why did I do that? I wanted to bring to you guys the ability to get six axis arms in your homes, in your applications, uh, for a lower cost um, than something like this. In this video, we're gonna be showing you something a little bit different. This time, we have a seven axis flexive robot. If you've seen my Automate video from Automate 2023 that I have on my channel, you've seen that I actually have an interview with one of their engineers, and I featured this robot and the bigger version of this, the Ryzen 10, in that video. When I went to Automate, I fell in love with this robot. This robot, uh, it looks sleek. Uh, it kind of looks like, I call it like the Apple product of the Cobot world. Um, it's got seven axes versus six axes, so it's got a little bit more dexterity. Uh, it's got a significantly longer reach than the other arms that I've brought to you before. The payload is four kilograms on this, which is about nine pounds. Um, and it is just a super, super capable arm. Um, what some features that I love about an arm like this is that uh, it's got uh, teach. Um, so basically I can grab the arm, which I'll show you uh, in this video. I can grab the arm and I can manipulate it to different uh, positions in space and teach it. Uh, I can modify all the different uh, joint angles via floating mode so I can unlock you know, just uh, certain joints to move them. I can unlock certain Cartesian directions to move it so I can move it along the X or maybe just along the Z or maybe just along the Y. Or what's cool is I can actually pull it, put this into a mode called null space and I can just unlock the Euler angles and I can basically pivot the tool center point around a certain point. So again, super capable arm um, that's uh, really uh, a step up from what I've shown you before. Um, and this time, currently, in order to program this, you can use their uh, visual interface, uh, which looks like uh, this, or you can, instead of looking at the visual interface and programming it that way, you can use uh, RDK, which, which is basically like their SDK. It's a Python SDK. Technically speaking, that Python SDK under the hood is simply executing uh, C++ code because there's also a C++ version of the RDK. So theoretically, I could write a JavaScript implementation and maybe someday I will. But for now, since there's already a Python uh, SDK for it, um, I will use that to control the ARM via code and I'll bring you other videos featuring the RDK but for this video, I just wanted to show you basically the robot moving around and do a little bit of an intro and background on the arm. So what comes with this arm is the uh, arm itself. And in addition to the arm is the uh, control box over here. Um, the control box has uh, 24 digital IO on the back. Uh, and then that runs at 24 volt. And it also has uh, safety inputs as well. Uh, so you can do things like uh, when uh, safety light curtain is triggered, put this into reduced mode. So maybe you have it running at a thousand millimeters a second when it's not interacting with a human, but then when a human enters the space, you could have the robot slow down and move in a reduced state. And all of that information is available online in their uh, documentation. They have a manual for the robot and they have a manual for their software. Uh, it's basically what comes with the robot is not just the box and the um, robot arm itself, but also a uh, Microsoft Surface tablet, and on the tablet runs the uh, Elements software. Now with the Elements software, uh, you can basically control uh, the robot arm and create what's called plans. And once you have those plans, you can then execute them um, by running them uh, from the UI, or you can actually execute those plans that are saved to the box from the RDK uh, Python. So um, those are two different ways of controlling the robot. Um, and in order to make those plans, you can, like I said before, take the robot, move it to positions. You can teach it um, you know, where to go and how to get there uh, and save those parameters. And you save those parameters in what is called a primitive. So basically you create a plan in flexive elements. The plan is made up of a bunch of primitives 
There are these boxes on the screen where you drag them and say, move L, that's a move linear. Uh, move J is a move joint. So you might move the arm to a position and say, I want to save the seven joint ankles. And I want to save them uh, such that you go back to this exact orientation next time. From that position, then you can drag and move L onto the screen and say, I want you to linearly move maybe you know, 200 millimeters along the X direction of the world origin, where the world origin in this case is the uh, coordinate system or base frame of the robot arm. Also, you can do things with the uh, tools coordinate system, where basically in the robot's coordinate system, X is up, but on the tool, X goes out, right? So let's say you're in front of something, but you're at some weird angle. You can basically move, you know, maybe 200 millimeters forward along the X, uh, sorry, Z direction uh, of the uh, tool itself. So you might want to push directly on something. And so basically there's different coordinate systems when you're programming the software to control how the robot moves. It also comes with this motion bar. I'll actually show you this motion bar. So the motion bar has um, an e-stop important in case you want to stop it. It's also got this dead man switch here. Uh, it's, they call it the enabling button. So basically when you're in free drive mode, you need to make sure you pull that switch in order to enable the robot. Um, in addition, if you pull it really hard, it also acts on an e-stop. So it's got a two position switch. Uh, in addition to that, you have the uh, run button here. So the run button will actually execute a program. Uh, so when I click that button, if I have a program uh, activated on the robot, it'll run that program. Uh, the free drive button will put it into a mode where I can basically free drive the robot. I can either unlock the individual joints or I can unlock uh, the Cartesian coordinate system or the tools coordinate system and only maybe certain axes on that coordinate system to move it around, uh, which you can see here where I'm moving it across the uh, Z axis. So in addition to free drive, you have this toggle switch. This is auto or manual mode. So the down is manual mode and the up is auto mode. When you're in manual mode, it will run slower. Um, and when you're moving the robot, when you put it in free drive, pull the enable bu uh, button and move it around, it'll resist your movement a little bit more. So you can get more fine grained movement. If you have it in auto mode and you have it in free drive, it'll move a little bit quicker um, than if you have it in free drive mode. And finally, when you're running your programs, the difference between auto and manual mode is when you're in manual mode and you're running a program, you need to hold down the enable button for that program to run. But if you're in auto mode with the switch up, you just hit the start button and it will run your program. What's cool about manual mode is when you're testing, it'll again run the robot a lot slower than in auto mode. And uh, let's say you don't like the direction the robot's going after you programmed it, you just let go of the enabling switch and the robot will stop dead in its tracks. Another cool option with the uh, manual mode is you can actually put the robot into a uh, step um, mode. So basically what you do is when you uh, click, you hold the enable button, you sit start, it will go and do the first uh, primitive. When it finishes that, it will wait for you to click the button a second time before it executes that next primitive. So, you know, that's a really cool feature for when you're designing out your plans and playing with your primitives and tweaking things. Um, so that's a little overview of the motion bar and the motion bar, uh, just like the robot plugs directly into the control box. Um, and to go over the uh, plug-in system, you have the motion bar, which plugs into the control box. You have the robot, which plugs into the control box. And then you have an ethernet cord that uh, comes out of the tablet. That's for a wired connection, so you can uh, control the box. You can also switch this switch to the other direction, and that will enable the Wi-Fi, such that you can remotely control the box without an ethernet connection. The tablet has a little gripper on the back. You can hold that and play around um, you know, remotely. In addition, there's also the plug, obviously, for power. Um, so you just plug that into your normal um, 120 volt you know, outlet, and you're good to go with uh, power. So yeah, that's an overview of the robot, the box, the motion bar, uh, the tablet. I'll make more videos on this, showing uh, it off and doing all sorts of different cool things. Uh, but that's an update on this. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you check out Flexiv. They're a really cool company. Their robots are awesome. Um, I'll leave a link in the description to this robot so you can uh, read more about it. And uh, with that, have a good rest of your day. And I hope you guys uh, like and subscribe to the video. And I'll see you 
next time. Thank you.